if backstrokers can't swim straight, they're never going to swim as fast as they otherwise could. It's a common problem with a lot of backstrokers, and it's costing them a lot of speed as they move through the water. Hi, everyone. Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. And today we're going to talk about how to improve lateral alignment in backstroke. So we want swimmers going straight through the water. A lot of times they're not, and we need to find solutions that can consistently and reliably help them learn to swim straighter so that they can go faster. We're going to go over why lateral alignment is so important, what it actually is, and what it actually looks like. Then we'll go through solutions to help solve this problem, as well as a few sets to see how to put these ideas into practice. Let's dive in. Why does lateral alignment matter? Well, the more resistance swimmers create as they move through the water, the slower they go. And there's two main ways to create resistance in backstroke. Swimmers want to be horizontally aligned, so they're moving through the water straight. And if they're not, they're at an angle. That's going to create a lot more resistance as they move through the water. Or they want to be moving straight forward through the water. And if they're moving side to side, that's going to create a lot of resistance as well. And side to side motions can be more problematic because they're constantly creating more resistance as swimmers shift side to side from position to position. It's one thing to be moving in a static way through the water that creates a lot of resistance, but it's a lot worse when swimmers are moving side to side. And so each stroke is creating more resistance. And to make matters worse, when swimmers are out of alignment, they're moving side to side. The arms aren't going to be in position to create propulsion. So not only are they creating more resistance as they move through the water, they're compromising the effectiveness of their pull. And the combination of those two elements is definitely going to cause swimmers to go slower. So that's why improving lateral alignment is so important. So what is lateral alignment? Well, swimmers want to be moving straight through the water as much as possible. And there should be as little side to side motion as they can manage. The more side to side motion there is, the more resistance they're going to create, and the more likely it is that they're going to compromise their arm pulls as well. So what causes poor lateral alignment? Well, there can be several different factors. One, if the shoulders are moving side to side, that's going to be a problem. Two, if the head's moving all over the place, that's going to be a problem, mostly because the shoulders are going to follow the head. If the hand is entering behind the head, that's going to shift the shoulders to the side as well. That's going to push the hips to the opposite side. And now swimmers are going to be wiggling back and forth, especially if they do the same thing on the other side with the other arm. Sometimes the arm recoveries themselves are the problem and swimmers aren't entering the water directly above the shoulders. And then other times the rotation timing is off and that prevents swimmers from being in the right position at the right time. For instance, when the hand enters, swimmers want to be rotated down, but if they're flat, there's not really anywhere for the arm to go, and sometimes that'll end up entering behind the head. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways for swimmers to mess this up, and that's why it can be a pretty common problem with a lot of backstrokers, and that's why it's important to have strategies and solutions to help swimmers improve their alignment because it significantly impacts speed, and it's fairly common. So we'll start off with an overhead view where you can see the swimmers are executing really great alignment. So if you watch their head first, you'll see that it doesn't move around very much, and you'll see that they're moving straight through the water and the head is leading the way. Then, if you watch their body, you can see that there's very little side to side motion. They're not wiggling much. They're not moving side to side. Again, they're moving everything straight through the water as much as possible. And then the next thing to watch for is the arm recoveries themselves. They're entering straight overhead and then the other arm is entering relatively straight overhead too. And that's allowing them to enter the water without moving side to side, without rotating, without losing their alignment as they enter the arms and as they begin their pulls. So the overhead view is really effective for helping you see how these swimmers are moving straight through the water. The head's not moving, the shoulders aren't moving much, and as a result, the rest of the body isn't moving much. And that's also facilitated by really clean, really straight, really direct arm recoveries. With lateral alignment, it's probably more about what swimmers don't do and that there's not extra excess motion as opposed to what they have to do. It's more about just keeping everything simple and everything moving straight down the pool. So we'll take a look at the same thing from under the water. And what you want to see is first, let's start with the head. You can see that that head's not moving around much at all. It's moving straight down the middle of the lane, and that's allowing her to swim really straight. And if we watch the shoulders, you'll see that the shoulders are definitely rotating but they're not moving side to side very much. Everything is moving straight down the pool. It's not going side to side. Then if we take a look at the hips, they're also rotating pretty well, but there's not very much side to side motion. Everything's moving straight down the pool. 
and everything's going to be really effective in maintaining alignment. And then if we watch the arm recoveries, you can see right there, they're entering straight in a line. And then the other arm is going to enter straight in a line there. And that's preventing her from moving from side to side. So again, just as we watch with the overhead view, we're watching from underneath, everything's straight, nothing's moving around from side to side, and everything's moving straight down the pool, which is going to create as much speed as possible by eliminating as much resistance as possible. So it's all about doing less, and less means going straight and not going side to side. So we've talked about why lateral alignment matters, we've talked about what it is, and we've seen what it is. So what's the challenge in helping swimmers improve this key skill? First of all, it's all about feel. Swimmers have to be aware of what's happening with their body position and how it's moving or not moving as they swim through the water. If they can't feel these movements, if they can't feel the added resistance on their head, on their shoulders, on their hips, they're not going to be able to change it. And unfortunately, a lot of swimmers aren't aware of many of these skills as they need to be. So if they can't feel it, they can't fix it. So we have to find ways to help them feel these skills and understand how they have to move differently in order to create better alignment so that they can create less resistance and create more speed. And related to feel, a lot of swimmers don't realize they're making these mistakes. They think they're moving straight through the water and to actually be straight, it's going to feel really different, really weird, and that's going to be really uncomfortable for them. And again, if they don't realize they're making these mistakes, if they can't feel it, they're not going to be able to change it. And unfortunately, instruction doesn't always change their awareness. If you just tell a swimmer to keep their head still, they already think they're keeping their head still, so they don't really understand how to keep it more still. Likewise, they don't realize that they're moving the shoulders back and forth with each stroke, or they don't realize they're entering the hand behind the head. And so if you tell them to not do that, they don't understand what that means because they can't feel it and they're not aware of it. So more than anything else, we have to help swimmers feel and become aware of these skills and we have to use activities that really require them to swim differently. And once they swim differently, they can learn to swim more effectively. Lastly, the symptoms don't always equal the causes. There are a lot of different reasons that swimmers can be disrupting their lateral alignment. It could be arm recoveries, it could be rotation timing, it could be head movement, it could be a combination of all three. And sometimes it's difficult to tell what is causing what. And so you have to address all of these different issues to get everything to clean up as opposed to just focusing on one thing and having everything work. Now, occasionally you can focus on one thing. And if you focus on the right thing, either by chance or because you know exactly what to do, it can really help clean things up. But a lot of times it's a complicated problem with multiple different factors and you have to address all of them in order to get the change you want. And so unfortunately, there's not always one or two really simple solutions to get change. You have to kind of attack it from a lot of different perspectives. However, once you do, change can usually happen pretty quickly and pretty significantly. So now we know why lateral alignment is important. We know what it is. We know what it looks like. And we know the challenges that face us to help swimmers improve this skill. So let's talk solutions. Much of the challenge is due to a lack of awareness. So we have to use strategies that help swimmers build awareness. So most of these activities, most of these strategies are really focused on helping swimmers feel the key skills and become aware of how they're moving through the water and help push them and encourage them to adopt more effective skills. Particularly with lateral alignment, it's useful to have multiple strategies to address the problem because some strategies are going to work with some swimmers, some strategies are not going to work with some swimmers, and you want to have multiple options because you never necessarily know which swimmer is going to react positively to which solution, to which drill. And so when you have multiple solutions to solve the same basic problem, you're much more likely to find one that helps a swimmer swim faster by improving their skills. So options is key here and using the options. And then once you figure out what's effective for a given swimmer, you can kind of double down on that and really emphasize that one because you know it's getting the result that you want. So first one up is paddle cap backstroke. So you're going to have them swim down the pool with a paddle on their head, their only goal is to keep that paddle on their head. So where the head goes, the body follows. If the head's moving all over the place, then the shoulders are going to move all over the place and the hips are going to move all over the place. So if we can keep the head still, it's much more likely that everything else is going to stop moving from side to side. And by putting the paddle on their head, we're encouraging them to keep the head relatively still. It's going to be a lot more difficult to keep the paddle on if they're moving all over the place with their head. And if they can learn to keep the head still, they can learn to keep the paddle on, they're going to be a lot more effective at swimming straight through the water. It's an easy way to solve a lot of problems because the paddle gives really clear feedback. 
the swimmers either keeping everything still and keeping the paddle on, or they're moving their head all over the place and they're not keeping the paddle on. And so swimmers learn real quick that they have to move differently. They have to keep the head still if they want to keep the paddle on. So this is pretty straightforward, exactly what you think it is. He's keeping the paddle on his head by keeping the head still. What's really effective is that it allows swimmers to get really great feedback as to whether they're moving the head and that encourages them to change. And you don't necessarily have to coach it because the paddle is doing the coaching for you. Next is goggles on head. So this is a different version of the previous activity. Same basic idea. We're encouraging swimmers to keep the head still. So they're going to swim with a pair of goggles on their forehead. And the goal is to keep the goggles on their head. To do that, they have to keep the head still. They have to keep the head stable. And as we talked about last time, where the head goes, the body follows. If the head stands still, the body is more likely to stay still as well. And so you can use different objects to scale the challenge. Goggles are pretty easy because it takes a lot of movement to get them to fall off. Hard is going to be a water bottle right on the top of the head, which is going to take very little movement to get that water bottle to fall. And so swimmers get really good at this skill. You can start using objects that are a lot harder to keep on the head, and that will challenge them further to keep the head really still as they move through the water. So again, pretty straightforward here. The goal is to keep the goggles on the head and they're gonna swim backstroke when they do that. They've gotta keep the head still, they've gotta keep everything balanced and they've gotta swim more or less straight through the water or those goggles are gonna come off the head. And so this is a great introductory activity. As they get a little bit of skill, you can start playing with different objects to really challenge them to hold that head still in a variety of different ways. Next up is what I call clock drill. So arm entries can significantly disrupt alignment. So if the arms are entering behind the head, that's going to pull the shoulders to the side, the hips are going to go the other direction, and that's going to cause all sorts of problems. And the challenge here is most swimmers have no idea what their arms are doing. They could be entering way over here. They could be entering way over there. They have no idea what's happening. And so by asking them to constantly change their arm positions will help them gain control and understanding and a feel of what their arms are doing and where they're entering the water. So I call it clock drill because they're going to enter the arms at different times, like a face of a clock. So this would be three o'clock or nine o'clock. And then we're gonna go to two o'clock or 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, one o'clock, and then 12 o'clock at the top. And so you can have them, so you can have them enter the arms at different positions and get a feel for what those positions actually are. More likely than not, they're going to struggle with it at first because they have no idea where their arms are and where they need to be to be at the right time. To make this drill more effective, you wanna use variation. You wanna use you want to use a lot of different positions and you can move from high positions to low positions, either across repetitions, within repetitions, you can do the opposite. You can start from low positions like three o'clock and nine o'clock and then move all the way up to 12 o'clock. You can use different arm positions at the same time. So for instance, the left arm is entering at three o'clock and then the right arm is entering at 12 o'clock and you can also switch positions on a lap to lap basis. Again, you're just having them use a lot of different positions. You're having them explore a lot of different entries. And the more you can have them do and the more control they get over it, the more likely it is they're going to be able to find a solution that works for them and allows them to enter cleanly and do so without disrupting their alignment. So here he's going to start at 12 o'clock and he's going to move down the clock face to end up at around three and nine. So he's going to get wider and wider with the recoveries and he's going to be able to feel that difference. And so you can use, again, a lot of different variations of this, but the key idea is that they need to change their arm positions and their entries. And even with this swimmer, you can see that he's much more comfortable entering at around 12 o'clock and it takes him a while to get down to three o'clock. And so you want swimmers to be able to do things on command, do them quickly and make really quick changes. And if they have control over what they're doing, that means they can feel what they're doing. And if they can feel what they're doing, they can change what they're doing. Last up is head up backstroke, and here we're helping swimmers learn how to time the rotation and tie that into their arm recovery. So if they're not rotating at the right time, they're not rotating to the right amount, they're really going to struggle. By lifting the head up, it tends to do two things that help us here. One, swimmers are going to tend to enter wider, and as we talked about, entering behind the head can cause a lot of problems with lateral alignment. It's also going to encourage swimmers to rotate the shoulders more effectively. That's going to improve the timing, and for those that aren't rotating enough, it's going to help them learn to rotate more. This is a great way to help clean up the arm recoveries, and the more you can clean up the arm recoveries, the more you can clean up alignment. This is particularly effective because you can really use it to help swimmers learn this skill at higher speeds because it tends to lend itself to faster speeds and higher stroke rates. Again, the focus is on the arm recoveries, driving those arm recoveries with the shoulder rotation, and then entering a little bit wider to help swimmers feel how to get 
the arms out from behind their head and to get them into a position that's creating fewer lateral alignment problems. So as we can see here, his head's up a little bit. He's not totally sitting up. It's not spin drill, but what you're going to see is you can see the shoulders driving there. There's a lot of rotation and he's entering relatively wide. And what's cool is he doesn't necessarily have to think about these things. They tend to happen naturally. So you don't have to necessarily coach, hey, rotate a lot. Hey, get your arms a little bit wider. It happens as a result of the drill. And that's why it's an effective way to help swimmers learn these skills. So building upon the previous solution, we're also going to address rotational timing with delayed backstroke. And so poor lateral alignment can be caused by poor rotation timing. It makes it harder to get the arm in the right position at the right time. And so the drill delay backstroke can really allow swimmers to better time the rotation of the pull. That's going to reduce the lateral impact of the pull because the arms are going to be in the right position at the right time to pull effectively. And it's going to set up more effective recoveries because again, because again, with more effective rotation timing, swimmers are more likely to be able to get the arms where they need to be when they need to be without entering behind the head and disrupting their alignment. When I have swimmers struggling with lateral alignment, I tend to use this solution only when it's really necessary because if I can fix it with the other ones, it's a little bit simpler and it's a little bit more direct. However, if swimmers have real rotation timing problems, this can be a great way to solve those. So a lot of swimmers are going to rotate before they finish the pull. So what we're doing here is we're really exaggerating that aspect of the skill and we're having swimmers pull all the way through prior to rotating. And that's going to put them in the right position at the end of their stroke to get the arms over the surface effectively and in position where they want to be. And it's going to prevent any lateral motion from the pole because it's going to be a lot more direct when it's working with the rotation. So if swimmers are having some pretty significant rotation timing issues, you're going to have to do something like this in order to clean those up or else it's going to be really difficult to get the arm recoveries to go where you want them to go. So having discussed several different drills that you can use to help swimmers improve their alignment, it's not just about doing those drills, it's how you do them. So you want to challenge them. And what you want to do is you want to have as much variation as possible so that they can get a better understanding of the skills they're trying to execute and they can get a better feel for what they're trying to do. And different options are going to force swimmers to swim effectively in different contexts. So you can use resistance. That's going to challenge swimmers in some ways. You can use overspeed. You can use buoys. You can use different hand postures like closed fist. You can have them go okay signs. You can have them use paddles. You can have them hold paddles in different ways. There's lots of different options. But it's not enough to just do the drills. You want to do the drills in a lot of different contexts. So that way, they're going to learn more effectively, they're going to learn more broadly, and that's going to help them execute any given skill a lot better. By giving them novel challenges, you're going to ensure that they continue to learn over time, whereas if you just do the same drills over and over again, they're not going to continue to learn. The idea is not to change the drills. You want to use the ones that are effective. Instead, you change how the drills are performed, and that's going to allow them to continue to work with really effective drills, but they're going to continue to learn because they're learning those drills in different ways. And whenever you're working on skills, I always encourage coaches to ask for performance in some way. So you can use stroke counts, you can use stroke rates, you can use speed, and you can use them in some sort of combination. By doing so, you're encouraging swimmers to find more effective solutions. If they have to go faster, they have to figure out how to execute the drill better. If they have to hit a certain stroke count, they have to be precise with how they're executing the drill. If you ask them to take lower stroke counts, they have to be more effective with the drill. Same thing with stroke rate. You can have them use fast stroke rates and swim well. You can have them use low stroke rates and swim well. It's about creating change and asking for performance. There's two basic ways that you can approach this. You can use the different sensory activities, the different drills, and then ask for performance. So for instance, you can go 425s, paddle cap, backstroke. They get a feel for what's happening with the head. And then you have them go 450s, backstroke, descend one to four at the same stroke count. Or you can have them perform during the sensory activities. So they're going to go 425s, head up, backstroke. They're going to build those to fast. So they have to change their speed with the head up, backstroke. And then they're going to go 425s, minimize stroke count and time, backstroke, where they try to apply that same skill into their swimming. So both are really effective. I use both consistently. The key thing is that you're challenging the skills, you're challenging the drills, and you're asking them to perform while swimming really well. Not only is that going to get better performance, it's going to encourage them to find better and more effective ways to execute the skills. And when they do that, that's what's going to promote learning. And the more they learn, the faster they're going to go. Now, let's take a look at some sets. This one's really focused on skill development as opposed to really training fitness. So they're going to go 425s and then four rounds of a 50 and a 25. They're going to repeat that 
three times. So they're always going to go 425s backstroke with a goggle on the head. Now we're focusing on keeping that head still. The first round, they're going to descend one to four. The next round, they're going to build. And the last round, they're going to go strong effort. So they're changing their speed as they do that drill. So they have to make sure they keep everything locked in and stable regardless of the speed. The next section, they're going to go 50 clock drill, and they're going to alternate that with a 25 backstroke. That backstroke is always descend one to four. So they're trying to put together whatever they learned during the clock drill into that backstroke 25. For the clock drill, they're going to change how they do it each round, but each round they're going to descend those one to four. So for the first round, they're going to go 25 where they start at 12 o'clock and then end up at three o'clock. And then they're going to go 25 where they start at three o'clock and end up at 12 o'clock. And that's within the 25. So they're changing their arm entries. They're changing their arm recoveries within each 25. Next section, they're going to go 25 where one arm is at three o'clock and the other arm is at 12 o'clock. So they're going to have one arm out to the side, one arm overhead, and they're going to be able to feel the difference between those two. And then they're going to switch sides by 25. And then the last one, they're going to alternate between six strokes at 12, six strokes at three. So they're going to go six strokes out here and then six strokes up here. And the purpose behind all that is to help them feel the differences in arm position. They can learn to control it. They can learn to feel it, and that means they're more likely to be able to find and select an arm recovery that's going to be most effective at helping them move straight down the pool. Two basic drills here, but we're using a lot of different variations, a lot of variety to help them really explore, figure out how to execute these skills in a lot of different situations. Next set has a little bit more of an endurance focus. They're going to go 350s, and then they're going to go two backstroke efforts, and they're going to repeat that for five total rounds. So the 350s are always 25 delay backstroke, 25 head up backstroke, and they're doing that with a pull buoy. They're going to descend those one to three to solid. So the purpose here is that we're focusing on the rotational timing aspect. The delay backstroke is focusing on the rotation timing during the pull. The head up backstroke is focusing on the rotation time during the arm recoveries. We're going to take the legs out of it with the pull buoy to really force them to be effective with the arms. They're going to descend those one to three, and each round, that descend is going to get a little bit faster. So they're going to have to be better and more effective with the timing as they go through. The longer efforts are always going to be backstroke, where number one is solid, number two is stronger, and they have to go the same stroke count each 25. So they're going to put together whatever they did on those 50s. They're going to try to execute that during the longer swims. We're going to go to 125s, to 175s, and then to 225s, and then we're going to go back down to 2175s, 2125s, and they need to be faster as they go. So each longer section is set up by the timing drills and focusing on the rotational timing to really make sure that everything is happening at the right time and the right way so that the arms can be in the right position to make sure that everything is moving straight down the pool. And then they're going to try to figure that out with the longer swims and the whole set, the whole time through, they're going to be adding effort, adding speed to increase the challenge and to try to execute those skills in more and more difficult situations. Next set is more of a speed focus set. They're going to go four rounds through of 525s. So the first one is paddle cap backstroke. They're going to build the fast. The next one is head up backstroke. They're going to build the fast. Then paddle cap backstroke with fins, build the fast. Then head up backstroke with fins, build the fast. And then to finish, a 25 backstroke fast. So the paddle cap freestyle, they've got to keep everything straight. They've got to keep everything locked in. And they're trying to build to as fast as they can without letting that paddle come off. At first, it might be difficult for them to do that, but they're trying to go as fast as they can. With head-up backstroke, they're trying to create speed by driving the shoulders harder, by entering the water more aggressively, while trying to make sure that those arm entries are happening a little bit wider than what they're used to. And then when they put the head back down, they'll probably be right where they need to be. Then we'll do the next two repetitions with fins so that they can feel the same things at even higher speeds. And then they'll finish it off, try to execute a really great 25 backstroke fast without any restrictions, without any requirements. They just let it happen. So it's a great way to work on these skills at speed because if swimmers can't do them fast, they're not going to be able to do them in races. So they have to start practicing that pretty early. And as they get more and more skilled, you can just have them do it in faster and faster situations. So lateral alignment is key for effective backstroke. It's all about moving straight down the pool. And the best way to help swimmers learn this skill is to challenge them with different drills that really help them feel and explore different ways to execute the arm recoveries, the head position, and the rotation timing, because those are the key elements of effective lateral alignment. And when swimmers can lock those in, they're going to be able to swim faster. So it's just a matter of exposing them to the right activities and then challenging them in those activities. If you want to learn more about how to create speed and backstroke, check out the video below.